What's happening everybody? Trey here joined as always by my dad Sean and today reactions to the classics we got a full album reaction to Ben Folds 5 and the record the unauthorized biography of Reinhold Messmer. Rolls right off the tongue. I was about to say talk about an album title. This comes courtesy of our patron and a big Ben Folds 5 fan. We've actually done a, a couple reactions to some of the songs on this record yeah. uh, from live streams and just in general. Uh, for our guy Javier. So thank you, Javier, as always. Uh, thank you, always, one, Javier. One of our uh, kind of day ones. So yeah, man. Uh, looking forward to doing this. I always enjoy some Ben Folds 5 on the channel, but uh, I know you've actually listened to this whole yeah, record I've listened before. to it a few times just because of the live streams. And, and, yeah. And if you like what you see here, please give us a big thumbs up. It really helps us out. Hit the subscribe button. If you haven't already, we upload stuff every single day. And if you'd like us to uh, react to some stuff for you, or support us in any way, check out our Patreon page below. Check out our Facebook group. Mm -hmm. A lot of great people, almost 200 people in that group, man, just talking about music and our Instagram page, Trey. So before we get into the album, I always like to tell a little bit about the group and yeah. the artists that we're covering. Uh, ben Folds 5 is an American alternative trio, of course. Ben Folds, which until we started mm -hmm. doing their music, I, did, I didn't know that his real name was <laughs> Ben Folds. Uh, he does the lead vocals, piano, keyboards, mm -hmm. principal songwriting. You got Robert Sledge, the bass, the double bass, the synth, and the backing vocals. And then Darren Jesse's the drums, the percussion. Also a songwriter and backing mm -hmm. vocals. During their first seven years, they released three studio albums. This was the last one. Uh, and eight singles. They disbanded in October of 2000. Mm. They reunited in 2011, released their fourth album, The Sound of the Life of the Mind, in 2012. And this comes kind of later towards their first stint. This was their third record yeah, the release. last one. April of 99. Debuted at 35 on the Billboard chart, and that was seen as a disappointment kind of internally. Uh, the title of the album is a little bit unique. It refers to the name used by Darren Jesse, the drummer, right. uh, and his friends on fake IDs. There is a real Reinhold Messner though. There is, and, and they didn't even know it. And he's uh, kind of a famous guy because he was the first man to climb Mount Everest solo. So what are the odds that that happens? Now they didn't know it, but surely whoever was making those fake <laughs> yeah. IDs or somebody somebody chose that name because that's a quite an odd name. And Ben actually stated in an interview that uh, the album was, I think in a way it shows how naive we were and idealistic we were as a band to think that the music business would care about us extending ourselves and developing and being somewhat different. Because that mm. record was a failure in almost every way that you can <laughs> fail. As a commercial release, it didn't sell up to anybody's expectations. Critically, it got sort of lukewarm reviews, and yeah, I think it was our best work. I think it's a great record. Many people think that the failure of this record mm -hmm. commercially was one of the reasons that it, they ended up breaking up. Ben Folds writes all the music. Uh, anything mm -hmm. that he didn't write on here, which was just a couple tracks, uh, we will let you know, Trey. But... Yeah, and now we'll uh, we'll just get into this record track by track. If you're watching this on YouTube, uh, music will be cut out just due to copyright. Uh, just in our experience, it might be a week or month later, but then they'll come block the video. So we're going to have a full version, though, available with the music down in the uh, description. There will be a link there to a, another site where yeah. you'll have the full thing. And if you just want to hear our thoughts on the tracks, you already know this record. You can just watch the YouTube video. But we're going to start this uh, with uh, is 11, 11 songs, 40 minutes. We're starting with one of the longer songs on here, Narcolepsy. And uh, in his book, Ben Folds discussed his emotional state in his 20s, saying, My method of dealing was an emotional fuse that would blow all too quickly, turning my whole system numb. The fuse-blowing concept is also closely related to another emotional defense mechanism I wrote about in Narcolepsy. I had a hard time being present. Ah, well... Yeah. Uh, ben Folds really brings it instrumentally mm -hmm. in songwriting, from my experience. Yeah. So, uh, and we'll be w w looking at the lyrics as we always do, mm -hmm. uh, and following along. All right, looking forward to this. Thanks again, Javier. Thank let's, you, Javier. Uh, always, brother. Let's Thank start you. start this off with narcolepsy. Wow, I was I was really really impressed with uh, with that opener right there. Um, really loved the the intro. Um, I don't even I don't know how long it went without lyrics. But I don't either, man, because we didn't have that part of it. Probably over two minutes, I would say, right after. Yeah, pretty close. Um, love the half. love the piano. Love yeah. the um, just the the shift here. The little rift was was great, and then boom, just the heavy guitars coming in. Lyricism was pretty darn good too. I like uh, I like the fact he says. Um, uh, 
you know, just nothing hurts when I go to sleep, <laughs> but I'm not tired, not tired. That was obviously kind of the refrain yeah. of the song. Um, I know you're already kind of familiar with this record. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, I, I listened to it months ago, just mm -hmm. a couple times. So, I, I mean, I'm not, I don't remember much of any of it. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the instrumentation did a very good job of building the ambiance mm -hmm. of the song, of what it's about, and building rocking out bringing it back down so yeah great opener man. yeah the the piano almost was a, a lullaby like thing yeah, um exactly. which i i thought was a cool um and yeah i, I really thought uh, he delivered the vocals well good way to start this record off man uh started with the bang and now we're going to go on to don't change your plans yeah don't know much about this one either just that it was released as a single but it did not chart so let's mm. check this thing out all right another uh Another topic that I think a, a lot of people can probably uh, relate to. Yeah, and I think he has an interesting way of, and he does this on several songs, but on that song it is really noticeable. Interesting way in style of delivering his vocals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Know, which makes him distinctive. Um, obviously, um, he's his girl is moving to L.A., and he won't, man. The he leaves won't. are falling back east. That's where I got to say. Uh, and it, it's kind of that pull because he says... She's one of the only things that makes him smile, and um, so sore from smiling. So much. Yeah, so but uh, destiny is calling and won't hold. When my time is up, I'm out of here. Um, all I know is I've got to be where my heart says I ought to be. It often makes no sense. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, man? Yeah, Sometimes. Exactly. And then the, the ending little yeah. uh, refrain: "I love you, goodbye. goodbye." It's like it's tough. This is going to be hard for us. He even mentions, I think, somewhere in there. Um, how at, at some point they might cross paths again or i know we've been together many times before i'll see you on the, the other, other side. side so always that hope but how often in life does that actually happen when two people part it's like very rarely rarely does that, ever man <laughs> that come back together uh didn't like it as much as the opener but uh, i didn't either but it's it, still an enjoyable still a strong tune, song yeah for sure and then now we're going to get to a tune we reacted to before a uh, mess fantastic song um yeah, and yeah. Ben just, you know, basically said it's a loss of innocence song about uh, having so much baggage that now you're mm. able to completely explain your history because you have made a mess. Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, this is a good one, y'all. So a real good one. Yeah. Looking forward to revisiting it. I hadn't revisited that song in a minute, uh, but once I heard it, I immediately yeah. recognized it. Man, one of uh, one of my favorite Ben Fold songs. Just and now that we're going through the the record, you kind of pick up on some themes. Mm -hmm. A lot of a uh, kind of melancholy throughout this record. Yeah, outstanding musicianship throughout the record too. Different things going mm -hmm. on. Never mail in two minutes like a lot of no. bands do. Like it's all it's all a uh, well thought out you know, plan. Yeah, I think exactly. This, this song, you know, he loves her. She's gone. Mm -hmm. Talks about towards the end, he finds another girl. He keeps all his memories kind of boxed up. That's she'll never right. know, but he's going to try not to repeat the same things that he mistakes he had made. So yeah, it's interesting to see the progression of the song. Cause here he's talking because, uh, his ex found somebody else, but he says he'll never love you or care for you more, more than, than I, I do. So uh, I I just love, um again, love the arrangement, one of my favorite piano portions on the record yeah. thus far. Th then he starts saying, he says, I don't believe in God, so I can't be saved. Mm. And the next verse, he doesn't believe, believe in, in love. Yeah, just then kind of that self-deprecation. Yeah. You know, being Christians, it's mm -hmm. hard to hear him sing that I don't believe <laughs> in God, so I can't be saved. But yeah, it takes it out as he takes himself down this long, mm -hmm. like deep hole as we do to ourselves a lot of times. But then... Then he finds the girl. It's not going to be her, unfortunately. That's right. He's going to make the best of it, man, because she ain't coming back. Yeah, there, there's a, a touch of optimism here and, yeah. a, a, as well. And we're keeping in uh, in tune with the songs that start with the letter M. We're going from mess now to magic. Yeah, and this one was actually written by the drummer, Darren Jesse. He said it's not a very complex song. Mm -hmm. It's a composite of people that he's known that has died. And it's also a love song, so I don't know how you mix those two, but we're about to find out. All right, man. We'll uh, we'll keep this great uh, great three tunes. Enjoy yeah, every man. single one to uh, to start. So Javier chose a good one. So magic. Enjoy the little uh, tambourine. Yeah. And like big drum. Uh, Set the ambiance in, of the song. Yeah, man. interplay. It's beautiful um, song. It, it really really was. Um, Probably my least favorite up to this point, but that's not to say it's bad. It, I think that just shows the strength of the uh, first three songs, and this is a, a little lighter. 
I mean, in a sense, a little lighter subject matter. I was going to say, I, um, I don't know, but yeah, I liked it better than Don't Change Your Plan, mm, so it's... it's. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, and interesting too to, to hear uh, hear Darren's, uh, you know, words yeah. here, um, you know, since Ben obviously writes the majority of uh, of their stuff, but... Um, a, a, a nice, a uh, nice beauty too with the the cello and violin, yeah. which have been constants as as well. Um, so, uh, so not uh, not a bad effort there. And now we're going to a, a real short tune. Yeah, it's only five lines. It's a hospital song. Yeah, it's about Forsyth. The hospital mentions Forsyth Medical Center, real hospital in Winston Salem, North Carolina. So, mm. uh, yeah, five lines. So two minutes, a little over two minutes long. All right, hospital song, short and sweet. Yeah, I mean, I don't even really view it as a song. I wonder, mm-hmm. I could not find anything, I'm sure it's out there somewhere, of what this, is it like why they wrote this, but to me it's just a fragment of a song. Uh, yeah, almost a, a segue, it seems like, obviously, the guy, uh, you know... It Got kinda, a terminal diet, yeah, probably ain't really good, whatever it is. But. It kind of keeps that, uh, keeps that loose, you know, kind of down in the dumps theme, or yeah. like tough theme that we've had. <laughs> Up, uh, up to this point, um, you know, again, just uh, that that slower piano yeah. and tempo. And I mean, it wasn't bad. It's no. just out of really considerate. It's just kind of there. It was interesting that the piano kind of crescendoed at the at the very end of the song. Um, so yeah, uh, solid for for what it was, man. And now we're gonna go to a song that I also know, um, and it's really really good. Army. Yeah, reached twenty eight in the UK and. That's about it. All right, let's uh, let's, let's get do to it. it. Army, you know it's interesting. It's uh, I mean, I don't think this is an out and out like concept album. No, but, but there's a lot of blending. There's actually a blending of a line in this. Song. Yeah, I know, um, I know the one you're talking about, and also it's interesting. Oh, I think I'll write a screenplay. Oh, I think I'll take it to L.A. because he mentioned in "Don't Change Your Plans" that hey, maybe one day I'll kind of go, go to L.A. Yeah, but uh, you know, then the one you're talking about. Yeah, but my redneck past is nipping at my heels, and the next song's called "Your Redneck." Past. That's right. Um, nice little clever lyricism in this. Oh, definitely. I think this is. Um, this might be my favorite, actually, up to this point. Um, I, I like the fact that just that um, just that relatability, probably for a lot, a lot of people, that lack of direction. Where am I going to go next? Am I going to go to the army? Nah, man, I'm 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 high. That's probably not a good idea. That's probably the only reason I'm thinking that right now. Three sad semesters in college. Only fifteen grand. Sheesh. Um, then he's thinking about the army again. He's like, you know what? Let me go join a band. I'll join the band. Then it then it doesn't work out. They have artistic differences. Break up in May. <laughs> they get back together in June with a different name and without him. Mm. Got a job at Chick Fil A. The guy's drifting around, man. No, so I I think this just does a wonderful job reflecting that theme of drifting, going from one thing to the next until you figure out what you want. And then at the end of the song, he's still thinking about the army. Hey man, maybe the, maybe the army will be for me. <laughs> yeah. And I like it. My ex-wives all despise me. So <laughs> I don't know who, how many that is, but that's going to, that's going to tee us up for the next song. That's your, right. Your redneck past, which this, this song sets up. So I don't know what kind of a future, uh, we have here in this mm. song, but, uh, let's check it out. Definitely had a different instrumental, um, approach yeah. to a little uh, trip hop vibes at the end there almost like some record scratching yeah. and whatnot um and as i mentioned in the reaction i found it comical when he's speaking in french he's saying sorry i'm uh i, I don't speak french don't i'm speak an american french. yeah that's uh, then funny he's saying please cook my steak and it's like it's uh, a funny thing they just threw in the middle of the song man um what french restaurants balling out on the steaks but uh <laughs> so um obviously this guy um doesn't want his redneck past to to follow yeah he doesn't want anybody to know where he's from uh and who knows some people definitely are like that where they're from a place maybe they're ashamed of their family in general or their town they don't want to be seen as a a small town redneck um especially if you want to be a rock star like billy idol (laughs) yeah yeah exactly um but uh another cool tune i like that they stretch their their legs a little bit and uh, experimented some yeah, me too, man. I thought it was a nice change of pace. Speaking of change of pace, is now we're going to have a uh, an odd little track. It's less than two minutes long. Your Most Valuable Possession hmm. is written by all the boys on songwriting credit just because of, of the way it's kind of put hmm. together. So Ben, Darren, Robert, and you also got Caleb Southern, and you got Dean Folds. Oh. Because there's a portion on here where it's actually a message 
that Dean, who was Ben's dad, left Ben on his answering machine. Back in the day, oh, kids yeah, were actually that's right. answering machines. Uh, I guess Ben didn't remember leaving it because he was half asleep. Because <laughs> Uh, or Dean didn't remember leaving it because he's half asleep. Ben said his dad was on a lot of cough medicine, oh. but that he took it real well that he put it in this song. So <laughs> that's a good thing because once it's in the song, it's in the song. There ain't no going back. So, no, uh, so. all right. Well, with that uh, right up, let's uh, let's get rocking. Your most valuable possession, man. That uh, that that was a total. I didn't know the whole thing was gonna yeah, the be whole the. Thing, uh, it, it's interesting at the very he's like thirty seconds remain. So. He's out of it. You can kind of tell he's out, but he knows that, like in the old days, most answer machines would hold two minutes worth of stuff. Okay. And then it would cut you off. See, I um, didn't know that either. So he knew. Uh, he knew that. I, it's it's fascinating to me that Ben decided this was going to uh, to make a song. Well, I I think just that probably the one line. The, have you been thinking about your most valuable possession? Your, your mind. mind. Which I mean, when you really think about it and ponder you could make an argument your mind is your most because your oh yeah your body your muscles your health as he was talking about john glennon's space john Glenn's space um that'll all kind of fade away but hey man you got to keep this mind sharp and healthy so uh it, it, I, and i like the jazzy kind of undertones i think it obviously fit uh, a, a spoken word piece yeah, like exactly like this so i guess uh, you just bring the answer machine in and you you pump it through the studio and say, guys, let's lay yeah. something down over this. Well, that's going to take us with another change of pace from mm -hmm. what we just had to regrets. All right. Only, only three left, man. I know. Yeah, it's uh, been a quick, quick moving record. So let's get to regrets. And I, I love the choir at the end there. Yeah, very nice touch over a minute of instrumentation at the end, which they do a lot on this album. Yeah, I, uh, again, kind of kind of gets the, uh, I mean... The unauthorized biography of uh, Ryan Hold Messner, you know, he... Must be thousands like him, man. That's yeah, man. as he uh, keeps going, he's obviously, the the song is called Regrets. He thinks of all the things that he didn't really do, the stuff he wasted. He didn't even visit his grandma before she died. Yeah. He made fun of the people that would go out and try and do stuff. Um, he ended up in jail for only a day. A uh, lot's packed in here. Um, one of my favorites, I, I remember as the song was going, I was like, yeah, I remember why I like this song so much. Yeah, and once again, he really utilized his unique delivery. Mm -hmm. on the definitely, vocal, definitely. Vocal style, and I think, you know, it's something that, I think everybody, when they get to a certain age, has regrets that they mm -hmm. sit there and think about it. It's a trick you can kind of do to yourself. There's no point in it. I think even if you're the most successful person in the world, you have some sort of regrets. Like, yeah. There's really, the cliche is there. Like, there's no reason to look back. Like, no, you, you got to learn from them and, and move forward. You can't do anything about it. So what's the point, man? So, yeah, really good tune, man. And now that'll take us to Jane. Jane. Um, Don't know anything about this one either. But so I, I, we only got two tracks it's left. A shorter so track, too. Let's uh, let's get rocking with uh, Jane. Jane. It's wind gust at the end. All right, Jane. Jane be Jane. Mm, love the uh, love the, the content and message of this. I was going to say, the message is fantastic. He packed a lot into under three minutes. Basically, be yourself. Don't try to mm -hmm. be somebody else for just because that's what you think you're supposed to be. Try to put on an act. Yeah. Try to live up to something. And, you know, I mean, the world we live in, and I think people have always lived in, but nowadays, the commercialization of the world, we can't get away from our phones or you're right. media for five seconds. So. We must have to be this way, especially when you're younger, you know, you're searching for yourself and most people find themselves in others. We're all going to just be the same. And mm -hmm. he's telling her, look, man, at the end of the day, none of this matters. Be yourself. Yeah, I love the verse. You're worried there might not be anything at all inside, but that's your worry should tell you that's not right. So the fact she's even yeah, worrying fantastic about that. Line. You've had it harder than anyone can know so hard to let it go. Um, wow, this is a, a nice underrated, I think. Uh, yeah, it really is. Little gym on here. It really so, is. Jane coming in hot, man. And that brings us to the final track, Lullaby. Co-written with Anna Goodman. Anna mm. Goodman and, and Ben. All right. Well, I'm expecting um, just kind of a the strings to come in i mean that's the song's you, called lullaby that's how you so. finish an 11 track <laughs> album man with the lullaby yeah so uh let's uh let's get rocking and after this we'll go into our favorite tracks and overall score bringing an end to the unauthorized biography of reinhold messner um a lot what i expected piano yeah. piano laden rock um and uh again just uh uh, as I was mentioning in the reaction, lovely, vivid imagery, great lyricism there. Uh, James Earl Jones, shout out, man. Yeah, James Earl Jones, really shout enjoyed out. That. You're, uh, you're doing pretty well. I, I looked up Anna, Anna Goodman. She was married to Ben. 
Oh, from okay. 87 to 92, but this came out in 99, so I guess it was an amicable divorce because uh, mm-hmm. he's still singing her yeah, songs. Yeah, that, that's uh, right. Interesting. Yeah, I didn't know who, who old Anna I had to look it was. up because I'm like, well, there's got to be a reason. She's not in the band, obviously, so how how we end up with this? All right, so let's go now to our favorite tracks. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with um, Army. I know that's probably a regret. I uh, enjoyed Narcolepsy as well, the opener. I thought it was a, one of my favorite intros on the record. And then Jane for a nice underrated tune as We're well. We're very similar. I, the old man's got to take notes now. we got 11 <laughs> songs here, so i got to keep track of them. I went with Narcolepsy, Mess, Magic, which I know you weren't mm. real high on. I like that. Regrets, and Jane. That's right. And, uh, yeah, so that... Uh, a lot, of, a lot of tracks, actually. I mean, on 11 songs, we named over half Yeah, the and really, record. there's only nine songs, yeah. right? Because, you know, hospital songs, five lines, and then your most valuable possession is, is a, you know... The, the recording, it's, the it's answering Dean machine. Fold, yeah. So, yeah. So, uh, what what are you... I guess I'll go first, because okay. um, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a... I mean, this was a, a very, very good record, man. I was... Uh, expecting some great things, just from what I knew from Ben Folds 5 and the few songs off this record I did, and right. hey, that's what I got, man. So I'm going a very solid 8.0 on this record. I really, really dug it, man. Ben Folds 5 uh, uh, bringing the heat on this one here. Yeah, and I'm going to say on this one, like, it's weird because I've, I've heard it a few times. I did listen to it after uh, Javier had requested mm-hmm. a song off there. It's probably Mess, I guess, that uh, and, and really enjoyed it. I listened to it a couple times. And then as we do on this journey that we're on, Trey, I got to move along, mm-hmm. man, because we listen to an insane amount of music. Uh, so didn't really remember much of it. It's it's an odd album. And, and Ben is odd in the fact that uh, their music is, is every song, there's instrumentation. Like, this is high class musicianship. When you're mm-hmm. talking about a guy who, yeah, you know, with ben, ben Folds at nine years old, his dad was a carpenter and a guy couldn't pay his bill, so he bartered and got a piano and brought it home. Mm. Ben didn't have any formal lesson. He's taught himself how to play it. <laughs> That's crazy, man. You know, so then he <laughs> learns how to play drums and bass and just figures it all out. So you got a guy who's highly talented. The other, the other guys in here are really good too. So it's an album listen, right? It's not a singles listen. Like mm. I, there's none of these songs that I go, man, I'm just going to spin that over and over. Like, it's just not that kind of music. Yeah, you could make an argument for maybe Army and Regrets. but A little bit, but it's not something that just sticks in my head. But all the songs are pretty good in their mm-hmm. own way. So uh, that's a long explanation <laughs> to give exactly the same grade as yeah. you gave. But just just kind of if you're going to go listen to this, man, mm-hmm. you know, Mark, it's not a long, it's it's 11 songs. Like I said, it's really closer to nine, and it's mm-hmm. only a 40-minute listen. So yeah. listen to the whole album to get kind of the feel for it. Because although you can tell every song has been Folds 5, mm-hmm. Every song does not sound the same. And that's a tricky yeah. thing to have a distinct sound, yet not sound it's the same. Still and I unique, really yeah. admire that. Uh, and, and the lyricism is fantastic along with the musicianship. So 8.0, Javier, you did well. You always oh, yeah. do. Can't, uh, can't sum it up any better than that, man. So let us know what you think of your uh, uh, of this record, if you're familiar with it. And if you're not, uh, go maybe give go it a spin. Out, man. Uh, thanks again, Javier. And uh, until next time, y'all, thanks for watching. Happy listening. And we will see ya.